What would you say, David, if you had that opportunity? Because so many of the people that we want to connect with are people who are on that journey of their mind is blowing. They think that they're losing their mind. Um, what would you say to yourself if you could go back to 2010 or even before that? So before things really started to wrap up for you, what would so you say? That's a great question. I mean, spirituality aside, first and foremost, I tell them to pluck his eyebrows. That's for sure. I, I mean, it's such an interesting question. I've honestly never really thought about it. I wouldn't know where to begin because I just instantly say it's sort of like life doesn't have to be how you see it. You know, you have, and this is for everyone, it's not even just for the three of us, but you have the ability to wake up every morning and redefine your life and your soul journey and your pathway how you want. Nothing is written in stone. Nothing is forever and nothing is unchangeable. Like the one constant we have in life is change. So embrace it and it's just go to on a discovery. And I'd probably say, by the way, like mediumship, like look into it. Like if we get started six years earlier, we we're going to be here. Like, you know, <laughs> like, you know. so I, mean, I, I would love that. I mean, what would you Diane, if you could go back to you from 2010, what would you say? If Hello? I could go back now, I think I, the one piece of advice I would give myself is that your mental health is related to your spiritual journey. I don't think I would have understood what that meant at that point in time, but it wasn't until I stopped thinking I was crazy that I actually stopped being crazy and just started to embrace a lot of the things that you're talking about. Now, obviously, my gifts, we'll call it, are, are very different, but it's still that anything is possible. Embrace the change. Just embrace who you are and be the, you know, the fullest aspect or expression of yourself that you can be. But I know if I said that to myself back in 2010, she'd probably still be saying, you're full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> she wouldn't. She'd be like, you know, what, what drugs are you taking? Exactly. That's why it's so great to reflect on it. I mean, what would you tell yourself? It's such a tough one because my life was like completely different at that point. I had a huge business. I think I probably had 60 or 70 staff in wow. 2010. And, you know, my life was very much me living in my ego, honestly. So was oh. yeah. <laughs> I was just making money and partying hard and like living this life that must have looked really great, but un underneath I was probably a bit lonely and a bit unhappy and very disconnected spiritually. Mm. Um, so although I'd always understood my intuitive side, I actually at some point purposely disconnected from it. Um, it was probably a bit too scary, and I think I would probably tell myself to sort that out, mm. you know, because life probably would have been a bit easier and I would have been in a lot more in the flow it a bit more for now i probably wouldn't tell david to change a thing maybe change a mindset but it's still everything i've done is a lesson of what i've learned but you know i go you know fast forward to 2023 david now and like i've got this spiritual understanding but i still embrace the human side a lot as well mm -hmm. like that's the thing and i i think for all spiritual people or all people with a spiritual inclination the biggest thing to remember is that being spiritual isn't a personality trait it doesn't make you who you are. And at the end of the day, you're regardless of your beliefs or your understandings, you're actually still human. Mm. 